This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. It's that time of year when we ask the question, what are you giving up for Lent? It's really similar to a New Year's resolution, although I feel like people stick to their Lenten promises a little bit more than their New Year's ones. Maybe it's because the Lenten ones are faith-based and the New Year's ones are secular, or maybe because the 40 days seems to be a little bit more doable than 365 or 366. So what is your Lenten practice? Many people make the decision to give up something during the time between Ash Wednesday and Easter. Sweets, soft drinks, junk food, liquor, tobacco, these all seem to be at the top of many lists. This past week, in the midst of our Arctic freeze here, a funny meme was passed on to me that said, Texans have Lent covered. We've given up heat and water and showers and groceries. We do things big here. So maybe you give up something, or maybe you add something to your routine. You exercise more, read a daily devotional, or dig into scripture, add volunteer time to your schedule, or practice a new prayer routine. A few years back, Lindsay and I decided that we would give away 40 different items during Lent, whether they were clothes, shoes, gift cards, knickknacks, whatever. It had to be something attractive that people would actually want, and not just the junk we wanted to get rid of. We had so much fun as we used our social media platforms as a lottery system for friends who wanted to score a good deal. It made us realize that we have a lot of stuff, more than enough stuff, actually. So what is the deal with these 40 days of Lent anyway? 40 is a number we see popping up throughout the Bible. Noah boards the ark for 40 days and 40 nights, along with his family and two of every kind of animal, from squirrels and raccoons to giraffes and kangaroos. Moses and the Israelites wander in the wilderness for 40 years after being released from their captivity in Egypt. The prophet Elijah eats one meal that lasts him 40 days and 40 nights, as he travels to Mount Horeb. And of course, in our gospel reading for today, Jesus is in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. 40 is one of those numbers that we would call a holy number for the way it's used within the Bible. But it's also a number which represents a considerable amount of time. Noah is in the ark for what seems to be an eternity. Moses and the people, they keep walking and walking and walking and walking, you get the picture. It's apparent that the time of Lent is derived from this 40-day story known as the temptation of Jesus. Gospel writer Mark's account of the temptation is much like the rest of his gospel. It's quick and it's to the point. He is so brief that he doesn't even bother to mention what the temptations are, unlike Matthew and Luke. Details, they're unimportant to him in this instance. A key point, though, in Mark's story is that Jesus is driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit immediately following his baptism. Now, this marks the beginning of his earthly ministry, and man, what a way to begin. You would guess that Jesus might like to have eased into things a little bit instead of being thrust into a situation that would cause much stress and anxiety to the typical normal human being. But I also imagine it was kind of like removing a band-aid or entering into a bone-chilling body of water. The quicker, the better. But this doesn't answer the question as to why. Why is Jesus driven into the wilderness to be tempted? What good does this do, and was it, what is its significance? I think one reason Jesus does this is to center himself. He needs time to be thoughtful in prayer a time to communicate with God in order to fully understand what this ministry is going to entail and what might be accomplished. I don't see this as being any different from what we might do. When we've got a lot going on in our lives, when it, we have times where it seems like we're just kind of carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders, doesn't it do us good to turn to the Lord in prayer? I personally can think more clearly once I kind of calm myself down, once I slow down the pace at which I'm running in order to open myself up to the possibilities that lie in my path. Prayer in alone time helped me to achieve a thought process based upon what God would have me do and how we might do it together.
It's amazing what good can come from times such as these, and no doubt that Jesus was trying to do the same with his stint in the wilderness. But another reason to venture into the wilderness for 40 days is so that he could be tempted. Tempted by Satan, the adversary, the one who represents everything that is against God. Now, it may sound strange, but it's important because it demonstrates to us that even Jesus, in his walk here on earth, is exposed to the sweet, enticing temptations of the devil. Because Jesus faces temptation, it should give us a little bit of hope and the reassurance that God knows exactly what we go through on a daily basis. He knows our ins and our outs, our ups and our downs, our joys and our struggles, our strengths and our weaknesses all because Jesus faced these same things in his time here on earth. And if God knows how we feel, certainly he's not going to leave us out there totally exposed during the darkest moments of our lives. Our stories are much like the story of Jesus. Like Jesus, baptism is the beginning. It's a time where we are spiritually cleansed and we hear God claiming us as one of his own. You are my child. With you, I am well pleased. And just as Jesus is thrust into the world to face the problems and the temptations of the world, we too find that our call is to love one another and to love God with all that we've got. And that's not an easy task. We will come up short. We will experience failure because we have different wildernesses out there just waiting for us. We all have a variety of temptations that kind of sneak into our lives at the worst possible times. But we also have Christ as our rock, the one who's kind of able to brush off the temptations off his shoulder, the one who resists taking the easy path, the one who sacrifices himself on our behalf so that we might be spiritually cleansed of our sins and share in the new life found in the resurrection. What a tremendous gift we've been given. The gift of Christ is ours to cherish and ours to share as we are driven out into the wilderness of this world, proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of God is at hand and that it has come to us through our Lord and Savior Jesus. This isn't some ordinary 40-day proposition that we add to our routines during a certain season during the church year. The gift of Jesus is the promise of a lifetime and beyond. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today knowing that you never walk alone? See y'all next week. Later.